cognitive decline in older age, like worsening memory and dementia, is unfortunately on the rise. And exercise is often talked about as a potential way to stop it. But does the science actually support that? Today I'm going over scientific studies on how exercise affects our cognitive abilities like memory, particularly as we get older. And I'll also be going over studies on whether or not exercise can actually help prevent or treat dementia. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I'm a full-time research scientist, and as a hobby on the side, I make videos about studies here to help you reach your health, nutrition, weight loss, and fitness goals. And since many of you had expressed interest, I wanted to let you know that the video on the actual and quite surprising causes of insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes is now available as a bonus video over on my Patreon. And the reason that's not going up here on YouTube is because YouTube is not ready for the controversy, and I am not ready for the controversy, because common wisdom on the causes of insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes pretty much doesn't resemble the actual science on it at all. So in the video, I go over the actual science on it. If you're interested in that, the link to my Patreon is in the description below. But now back to the current topic of exercise and cognition. And in this video, I'm going to go over studies on how different types of exercise, specifically cardio, resistance training, and high intensity interval training affect our cognitive abilities as we age, as well as dementia. And I'll also talk about frequency of exercise and amount and intensities too. And most of these studies have been done in people over the age of 50, but I will also be talking about some findings in people under 50. So hopefully this will be relevant to anyone looking to improve their cognitive abilities or prevent cognitive decline down the road. And the research on exercise and cognitive abilities mostly focuses on two specific types of cognitive ability. The first is memory, which is pretty self-explanatory. And typically that's in terms of being able to remember specific information, not like facts, but like what you did last week. And the second cognitive ability that is often assessed in these studies is executive function. And as defined in these studies, which it does vary by field, executive function is the set of cognitive abilities that enable us to plan and think flexibly and focus our attention and resist acting impulsively. And importantly, the main cognitive abilities that decline as we get older are memory and executive function. So these studies are largely focused on how exercise affects the two types of cognitive abilities that get especially worsened by aging. And many of these studies also assess cognition in terms of just a single global cognitive function score, which includes memory and executive function, as well as things like processing speed, so your ability to think quickly, and other cognitive abilities. And now to jump right into our findings, a meta-analysis of studies in people over the age of 60 finds that aerobic exercise, aka cardio, improves memory, executive function, and global cognitive function when assessed overall. And for people under the age of 60, it's so far been found that exercise does improve executive function, and the benefits of exercise for executive function get larger as you get older. So starting an exercise routine early and keeping it up can only have good effects on you, really in terms of cognitive ability. And unless I say otherwise for, I believe, one study near the end, all of these studies are randomized controlled trials, which means they are experiments that get at actual cause and effect. They are not correlational or epidemiological or association or observational or any other synonyms you've heard. These studies do establish what happens when we make people exercise versus some kind of placebo activity. And most of the things I'll be talking about today are from meta-analyses of randomized controlled trials. And now back to people over the age of 60, when we compare different types of cardio, specifically high intensity interval training versus moderate continuous cardio like jogging, it's been found that high intensity interval training is better for memory. However, both are about equally great for executive function. And across all these different studies, it's been found that on average, exercise durations of 45 to 60 minutes per session are optimal for cognition as well as doing at least moderate intensity exercise, so think like jogging or above, but not so much walking, are better for cognition. And usually these studies had people do two to three sessions of cardio per week. And I want to know that the effects I'm talking about are long-term, so how exercising repeatedly over the course of weeks to months leads to long-term improvements in cognition. But there's also plenty of evidence that exercising causes pretty immediate improvements in cognition right afterwards, across all ages. So you should get some immediate benefits to your cognitive abilities from exercising, and those should continue to accumulate over time as you continue exercising. And so far we've talked about cardio, but what about resistance training like lifting weights? 
And there's less research on this because it's a bit of a newer topic, but the research so far is very promising. For example, it's been found that resistance training twice a week has big benefits for memory and executive function in people over 60. And these have been found to be very long-term benefits. So for example, after a year of lifting twice a week, people were found to have better memory and executive function. And this effect persisted even two years later after the experimental exercise routine was over. So people may have still been lifting on their own, but they were no longer made to keep this consistent routine and they still had this improved memory and executive function years later. For example, to get an idea of the magnitude of some of these effects, a study found that lifting twice a week for a year improved executive function by 12%, which when we think about how much of our cognitive ability is kind of genetic or very hard to change, the fact that exercise can improve it that much by 12% is pretty huge in my book. So we've talked about cardio and resistance training separately, but which one is better? The idea of comparing the two is still pretty new, but a meta-analysis finds that across studies, it looks like cardio is better for global overall cognitive function as well as executive function, but combining cardio and lifting is best for memory and cognition overall. So if we were to synthesize these findings to construct what is perhaps the optimal exercise routine for cognitive function based on what we know so far, is I would suggest doing resistance training, like lifting weights twice a week, and then doing some kind of cardio, like jogging or running or swimming or dancing for at least 45 minutes to an hour, two to three times a week. So you might do Tuesdays and Thursdays lifting, and then Monday, Wednesday, Friday, cardio, and then Saturday, Sunday, rest. Could be an example of a good routine for cognitive function. And another interesting finding and proof that exercise itself improves cognitive function is the fact that improvements in VO2 max predict improvements in cognitive function. And also things like improving your mile time or improving your muscle strength predict improvements in cognitive function. So what we see is that the physical health benefits of exercise predict the cognitive health benefits of exercise, which makes sense. So an implication of this is that the physical indicators you get that your fitness is improving from whatever exercise you're doing are a good way to tell how much you might be improving your cognitive function from your exercise. So like if you're really rapidly improving your mile times when you're running, or really increasing the amount of weight you're able to lift, then that is likely indicating that you are also increasing your cognitive function more. And so far I've been talking about cognitive abilities and now I'm going to talk about a little segue topic that then will get us into the topic of dementia and cognitive decline. And this in-between topic is why does exercise improve our cognitive abilities? And what's really cool is that studies have actually found that exercise changes our brain. So for example, there are a few brain areas that get most damaged by aging. And one of those is the hippocampus, which is responsible for memory. And what studies have found is that exercise actually increases the size of the hippocampus. For example, it's been found that when people over 60 were put on a cardio routine where they did cardio three times a week over the course of a year, they actually reversed their age-related hippocampal damage by one to two years. So their hippocampus got bigger and these improvements to their hippocampus from exercise actually predicted improvements in memory. So what this study indicates is that exercise can actually reverse the effects of aging on our brain and help us sort of age backwards in terms of our hippocampal neurons. And doing so is probably why exercise improves memory when we're older. And another region of our brain that gets especially damaged with aging is called the prefrontal cortex, which is largely responsible for executive function, which also declines in aging. And exercise in terms of both cardio and resistance training have been found to increase the volume of our prefrontal cortex. So it seems to be the same kind of effect as with the hippocampus where doing exercise can reverse essentially the effects of aging on this part of our brain. And another aspect of brain health that gets negatively affected by aging is our white matter integrity. So white matter are the axons of our neurons that allow different parts of our brain to communicate with each other essentially. So it's very important to have intact white matter if we want to think effectively and efficiently. And it's been found that in people over 60, doing resistance training prevents the loss of white matter. In fact, it cuts the rate of white matter loss in half with aging. So you can have the amount of effect that aging will have on your white matter if you do resistance training is what these studies suggest. And now for our last segment of this video on whether exercise can help prevent or perhaps even treat dementia. And the answer is not what I'd hoped because a meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials looking at how long-term exercise affects people's likelihood of getting dementia or mild cognitive impairment, which is the precursor to dementia, did not find any benefits of exercise on preventing their participants from getting dementia. However, there are two caveats that mean there is still potentially some hope in terms of exercise being able to help prevent dementia. 
And the first is that these studies almost invariably just looked at aerobic exercise, so cardio, and only one study included a small strength training component. So it's possible that as more studies come out on resistance training and dementia, we may find that lifting weights could help prevent dementia, but we don't know yet. Also, as an interim caveat, studies have found that cardio does help improve cognition in people who are starting to get dementia. So once someone is starting to have some cognitive decline, doing cardio can help slow that cognitive decline down. But it doesn't look like doing cardio can prevent getting any kind of dementia in the first place. And the second caveat is that all of these exercise interventions only took place over the course of a year, or in one case, two years. But there's a lot of evidence that dementia risk is something that accumulates over the course of a lifetime. So it's possible that once you're already just one or two years away from dementia, it might be too late for exercise to actually be able to help. And I'm going to read a quote from a paper on this. And this paper said that there is strong evidence that at least half of the risk for dementia is attributable to lifestyle factors such as diet, exercise, and smoking. Moreover, the disease processes that result in dementia develop over several decades, implying that attempts to ameliorate them, which means to improve or help them, need to start early in life. So what this means is that based on all the evidence we have, there is a good chance that exercise over the long term, like long, long term, like maybe even a decade or more, is what is needed to actually be able to get exercise benefits for dementia. So what these studies do suggest is that we can't just wait until the last minute to start an exercise routine if we are trying to prevent dementia. And I'm sorry I don't have better news about preventing dementia. Thankfully, there is a lot of research happening trying to find ways to prevent and treat dementia right now, and we are getting promising findings every day, and I am very hopeful that we are going to be close to a breakthrough soon and get some good treatments out there. And now for the main takeaways from this video, both cardio and resistance training improve our memory and executive function and global cognitive abilities, particularly in people over the age of 60. And both cardio and resistance training can help prevent and even reverse the damage that aging does to our brains in a way that helps improve our cognition. And exercise over the course of a year or two years doesn't really do anything to help prevent dementia, at least in terms of cardio. But what we don't know yet is whether resistance training might help dementia and whether more long-term cardio or resistance training, like over the course of many years, might help prevent dementia. So hopefully we will get more studies on that soon and I can have a more solid answer for you on that one. But overall, exercise is definitely good for your cognition and should give you better cognitive function both now and in the future. I hope you found this video helpful or at least interesting. And if you are interested in getting the main takeaways from every video that are written up summaries of each one, as well as bonus videos and Q and A's, then head on over to the Patreon, which is linked in the description below. And if you would like to help support me in making these videos, then you can do so through the Patreon or through the GoFundMe for one-time donations. I really appreciate all of you who support me in doing this. It really means a lot to me. And if you like this video, please like and share it so we can get this information out there so people know how good exercise is for their cognitive abilities as they get older. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell below to stay up to date on all this science. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.